Good morning guys, welcome back. This is Automotive Inquiries. I've been having a lot of interest, a lot of questions about fill electronics in the vehicles and everything like that. Um, before you start replacing expensive parts, um, going to the junkyards, which you may get inoperable parts again, um, or trying to track down something like that, some of the easy things you can do yourself is what's called a, check, um, a circuit board check and checking solder joints. Um, on the Jimmy that we had in our old videos, it had a flickering 4x4 control module. Now the module would flicker and come on and then go off and everything like that. A lot of people would just buy a uh, repop piece or an aftermarket piece. Well, sometimes OEM quality is still the best. So if you can fix it yourself, take some extra time you can. My suggestion is if it's flickering, if it's working sometime, more than likely you just have a short. Now you can check all the wiring and everything like that, but unless you've had an engine fire or rodent problem, stuff like that, a lot of times it's actually just a solder joint in the actual piece. So we took that piece off that jimmy, took the back off it very carefully, found out it had three cracks. The rougher riding the vehicle, the more possibility it's actually a solder crack than it is an actual short in the vehicle. Today I'm working on a Nissan Pathfinder 1995 that had a fluctuating tachometer. Um, that tack's hard to find unless you want to go to Junker, and then you really don't know if you're getting what you're getting or if it's going to have the same problem. That vehicle itself rides really rough. So what I did is I took the speedometer and the tachometer assembly apart, and what I found inside this circuit board here was these joints right here that go around the actual little uh, motor had little cracks in them. And so what I did is if you can get a light on there, it's going to be hard to see the cracks, but sometimes they're fairly obvious. Um, especially if it has this um, solder flux and that's kind of melted away you can see where that crack might have been so what I did is I went through and I warmed up all the solder you really don't have to put new solder on there but you warm it up with a soldering iron and go up until it turns into a, a molten and it'll actually suck back down to the flux went through and touched all these contacts too that are on the back of these actual resistors so if you're looking for a resistor in your vehicle, somebody said that the resistor could be bad. These are what they're talking about, these little resistor pieces. Um, radio shacks close, so you'd have to probably get these off the internet, but they do have a part number on it or anything like that. The potential of those actually being gone or, or destroyed are, are actually fairly rare. So again, it's most likely going to be these solder joints. And I went through and tacked them all back up and everything like that. Now again, that was a great fix for the Jimmy. This may not fix your problem, but for about 20 minutes of your time pulling apart and actually re-soldering these and putting them back together and having it fixed will save you money in the long run. Now if you come over here to the workbench, if you take a look at it, you can go to Harbor Freight, you can go to Walmart and pick up a cheap soldering iron like this. I have nicer ones. Um, solder is also very cheap. If you've never soldered anything, basically all you're going to do is you're going to touch this solder until it becomes molten. Now, once you tap it off, you can kind of see these balls that are on the back of these actual modules. So what I would suggest is instead of putting a ton of solder in there and trying to add your own solder to it, is just use it and you're going to go up and touch the back of the circuit board and hold this on there and eventually it just kind of turns back to a molten bead. And it's actually going to pull right back down to that circuit board and you're done. You won't need to add too much. If you do get a lot of stuff on your tip, you can keep a little bit of a wet rag around. If you don't want it to get burned, you can use some double out buck steel wool to clean the tip of the actual soldering, but be careful grabbing it. It is burning hot. And then like I said, once you get through there, you can just go through and touch each one of these until they turn back into that molten uh, um, resin, and then basically it'll tack it back down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this tachometer assembly back together. Again, guys, this is something that you can do at home. The soldering iron, the solder cost all of eight, nine dollars at Harbor Freight. Um, you can go through and potentially fix your problem without spending big time money. Again, if the part's working sometimes, it's probably a short in the actual piece itself. Um, if you get in the engine compartment and you're looking at a tack and you don't see any frayed wiring in any of the harnesses, which are traditionally wrapped by hard plastic and um, electrical tape, most likely it's going to be a short somewhere in the actual unit. And the only way to have a short in this unit would be on the circuit board itself. So if you have any more questions, comments, anything like that, reach out to me on Automotive Inquiries and we'll get to it. Take care.